Ever since I made my studying at Istituto Marangoni video, I've gotten so many DMs about how to graduate at the top of your class in the fashion business course. Firstly, I just want to say the fact that you're looking into this shows how driven you are and I truly hope that you never lose that. I was one of the top graduates in my cohort and I assure you that little bit of extra can lead to some massive rewards. Without further ado, let's get into exactly how I did it. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lara and I make videos about self-care, personal growth, fashion, beauty, wellness, and the like. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I studied at Istituto Marangoni London for four years. First, I got a foundation degree in fashion design and then I followed that with a bachelor's degree in fashion business. So I have a lot of Marangoni experience, including a few assessments in the beginning where I just got, you know, the standard good average kind of grade. But let me tell you, when I started getting amazing grades, it was like a high. <laughs> Once you get that feeling, you just never really want to settle for average again. Before we get into all the tips, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. There are tons of paths to the same results. These are just the things that worked for me. We are all super different, okay? We all learn differently and we all focus differently. So I want to encourage you to be kind to yourself and just do your best, whatever that means each day. This video will be structured as follows. First, I'm gonna remind you why you wanna score high. Then I'm gonna share some general resources that helped me during the course. Then I'm gonna talk you through how to understand the brief you're given. I'm also gonna explain how to do research that pays off. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to over deliver on aesthetic. So before you get turned off by the work that goes into it, let me remind you why the grade is worth it. Scoring high helps your tutors take you more seriously, which opens up more opportunities for you. The tutors and guest lecturers at Marangoni are incredible industry professionals who oftentimes are still working amazing roles in the industry while they teach at the faculty. This means they've got connections, and after being out in the real world for a while, trust me, those connections are valuable. Having a recommendation can make all the difference when applying to a job, especially if it's an entry-level one or an internship where you might not have that much experience or previous employer recommendations to back you. Secondly, your grades really do speak for you. I'm not saying they're the end all be all or that you'll never get a job if your grade isn't a distinction. But when you don't have experience and you're competing against a bunch of new graduates, having higher grades can be a reflection of your industry knowledge, dedication, and perseverance. Thirdly, you can use these reports on your portfolio. Because Marangoni reports are full-blown briefs repurposed from real-life scenarios and that require you to deliver solutions that would work in real-life scenarios, if you do good, you can actually repurpose them into your portfolio. At the very beginning of my career, I actually bought a domain that was my name and I repurposed a lot of that Marangoni work into a context that would be easily digestible and appealing to the companies that I was applying to. I put the link in my CV and even referred to it during some descriptions in the education section when I was talking about some projects that I had been involved in. Lastly, you're expanding your skill set. When you push yourself to do better in an assessment or over deliver on a report, you're actually developing a new skill set. And not only are you becoming more valuable in the job market, you're actually becoming more confident in that value. Are you convinced yet? Good. Let's talk about the how. The most basic fundamental tips that I can give you are all about general resources. One of my subscribers DM'd me on Instagram asking about what books she should buy to prepare for the course. 
To be honest, we didn't really have any designated books, which is something that I honestly love. Our tutors were really good at pulling specific elements, chapters, or frameworks and tools from books and actually just having us focus on that section and practicing it in a practical way in class rather than having us go through books cover to cover. The course will also give you access to tons of tools and platforms to help you stay up to date into what's going on in the industry at all times. So you don't have to worry too much, but there are some things that you can do now and some habits that you can develop now to get ahead when it's time. The simplest and the most fun way is learning about the state of the fashion industry and the impact of present day culture on it. For example, what are the current issues that the fashion industry is facing? What are some current highly prevailing consumer preferences? These are things that you will have the opportunity to research in depth for your reports, but staying up to date will definitely give you a slight edge. I recommend downloading the most recent state of fashion report by McKinsey and Business of Fashion. It's totally free and done once a year, so you know you're getting the most recent insights from some of the most reputable sources out there. If you're nervous about what sort of thing will be covered in your fashion business degree, these reports will really give you the inside scoop because Marangoni is a very forward-thinking school and they will always be training you on the most recent technologies and how to apply them to, you know, your traditional heritage brand, your startup brand, and so on. You can also read the Business of Fashion or the Vogue business blogs to stay up to date on the more day-to-days of the fashion industry. So these would be like bite-sized reports, like for example, Tiffany has now released a series of campaigns trying to target a younger audience or Gucci enters the metaverse kind of thing. Don't obsess about logging in daily. Don't obsess about knowing all of the things. Don't obsess about researching all of the keywords. Just use it as a way to get informed and whatever you're naturally drawn to and naturally interested in, you can then go and research more if you want. A book that I can recommend though and that our program leader actually recommended during our final year is Fashionopolis by Dana Thomas. I actually have it right here. Dana Thomas is an author and journalist and this book is basically an, a report of her investigation into the dangers of fast fashion and its impacts on our society and planet. Lastly, something that we didn't really get recommended during our course but I recommend because it's fun and exciting is watching YouTube channels like Hot La Mode or Mina Lay. Mina Lay is my favorite but they both have their own value. Luke from Hot La Mode is great to learn about specific house codes and design signatures by the various fashion brands. Watching him will deepen your ability to recognize a brand just by the cut and fabric used for a garment or accessory. It will also expose you to a range of brands instead of keeping you with just that standard Fendi, Gucci, Prada awareness, which I know was definitely me in a lot of ways when I went into fashion school and it was only with time that I got to know contemporary brands. Mina Le, on the other hand, is amazing to learn about origin of specific subcultures and aesthetics. I find her channel is great to help me contextualize why society is gravitating towards a specific trend. Now, the most important tip I can give you is understanding the brief. Every time you get an assessment, you'll get what we call the brief. It's a document explaining what the assessment wants you to do, as well as some other technical details like maximum word count and mandatories. The mandatories are basically an outline of the key things that need to be present in your report. Every assessment, your mandatories will increase to include a new framework that you've been taught and practiced in class. Doing the mandatories beautifully is the easiest way that you can get your grade up high. You can focus on over-delivering once you've got the mandatories done and done right. Because yes, over-delivering will get you an even higher mark, but there is no point in doing a lot and not doing it well. 
If you do that, you will literally just have a report filled with fluff. So let me give you an example that we can follow. For one of my favorite assessments, we had to plan a pop-up to promote the launch of Chloe's first ever sneaker line. This pop-up was to take place at Selfridges. Some of the mandatories were a customer profile, customer experience plan, and event and marketing budgets. There were actually a lot more, but for the sake of this video, let's just say it was those three. In order to deliver on those mandatories, we first need to know how to carry out meticulous research. The course will require that you do surveys and even interview people sometimes as part of research for your projects. A lot of people thought they were being really smart by faking these interviews, but the responses you get are actually valuable material that will help you make strategic suggestions and prove that they are grounded in facts. It will make your suggestions feel feasible in real life and therefore it will help you score higher. Are we seeing a pattern here? We want everything that we create to be grounded in fact and feel like it can be done in real life. In addition to surveys and so on, you'll also have access to tons of tools like Mintel, Euromonitor, WGSN, which will have a bunch of secondary research and stats that you can use. So let's see how we would carry out the research for each of the mandatories that we mentioned previously. For the customer profile, we could start with studying the brand identity. What are they communicating through their language and campaigns? For example, just by looking at a campaign, you can see that Chloe is targeting someone a lot more feminine than Saint Laurent for example. Also, have any of these resources that you have access to recently reported on this brand having a campaign that seems to indicate that they're now shifting towards a different segment or that validates their existing segment? You can also have an interview question where you're asking the sales associate about the person that normally shops in this store. Lastly, we would use our common sense and the context. With Chloe being a feminine brand launching their first ever sneaker line, you could assume that they're doing two things. One is helping their existing feminine presenting customer to kind of zhuzh up their wardrobe with some streetwear and take part in a new trend in a way that still feels comfortable, familiar, and safe to them. And two, they would probably be trying to reach also a newer segment of girls that love sneakers but that also love luxury and that are excited about adding this new take on a more feminine sneaker to their collection. For the customer experience plan, we can research what has recently been done at pop-ups that has gone viral and are there any statistics to back the results? What are other brands, not necessarily competitors or even necessarily the same industry brands, doing uh, to increase footfall to their store? And then look at all of these elements and figure out how can you mix them or elevate them to create something that feels new. Lastly, for the event budget, we had to literally reach out to companies and get quotes online and research actual prices to create the budget. Again, a lot of people faked this, but if you add credibility to yours by in your appendix having a spreadsheet where you're literally listing, for example, catering and then the price and then the screenshot of the email or the website where you found this information if it's a book or just standard website that you can cite even just putting a citation this will literally bring so much credibility to your stats and automatically boost your grade in summary it's important that you develop a real curiosity and do real research for your reports lastly it's important that you start over delivering on aesthetics being in fashion school, it shouldn't be surprising that your reports will score highest when they look good. So many of my colleagues would complain and moan saying things like, Oh, I signed up for a fashion business degree, not a graphic design degree. But let's be real. Aesthetic matters in our industry. Plus, good visuals can help you communicate and get your point across a lot more effectively. Good visuals doesn't mean that it needs to be something out of this world. You can even have a minimalistic and clean aesthetic 
but trust me it shows when you want to make something look good throughout years two and three you will get trained on how to use tools like indesign and photoshop to deliver these very aesthetic results so as time goes on this will not be a optional thing but i recommend that you start early so that you don't have a steep learning curve at that time and because uh, putting an effort into the aesthetic of my reports is one of the number one things that boosted my grade up super high once all of the content was already good because you can't just keep adding tons of content there's a word limit so the best way to zhuzh it up is by making it look really nice when you invest in how your work looks that's when you'll find amazing things happening like seeing your reports having been printed out by the school and left on some of the tables in the open space for potential new students to see when they go on their open day you know your school is proud of your work when they literally print it out as an example of the talent that they create by the way this didn't happen to me it happened to a friend of mine but she was always amazing at you know making her reports look really good so basically in terms of structure if I could just summarize it, I would say make your reports look as much like magazines as possible. You can use InDesign, you can use Canva, you can even purchase templates on Creative Market. That's one little secret that I wish I knew in fashion school. Also, when it comes to communicating a specific idea, show it. Do you want to promote the pop-up in a two-page spread in Vogue? Get a mock-up and actually create the little two-page spread and put that into your report to illustrate and then within the text you can say refer to image one and it just makes your report so much more engaging it really shows that you put in the work and these mock-ups or visuals don't need to be perfect no one is expecting them to be perfect but they want to see that the effort has been made and especially when other people aren't making that effort it can really help you stand out using photoshop is really not that difficult i promise you it's not that difficult and a subscription is free with your course you can quickly learn how to do any specific task on youtube if you buy a mock-up off of creative market a lot of them even come with a little quick walkthrough video on how you can use it but photoshop aside just use whatever you're good at i had a friend the same one that had her assessment printed she was a badass at making things look good with powerpoint i was literally like girl how <laughs> one time for an assessment where we had to create social media templates i found it quicker to use photoshop to remove to separate some of the people from the backgrounds and create a digital collage but she didn't really vibe with photoshop and so she just used a cutting mat and an exato knife she printed the stuff out just did a traditional collage and scanned it back in and it looked fantastic it looked so good that one of our tutors offered her an internship when she saw it so i hope this was helpful and next up is my video about the career progression options for each fashion business pathway bye